Hi, Gemini, Sun, Moon, and Ascendant. This is Dane, and I'm going to be doing a very exciting reading. Well, I'm very excited for it. We're going to be doing Pluto re-entering into Pluto retrograde, re-entering into Capricorn. And this is the last time that Pluto revisits Capricorn for about 250 years. So it's pretty a big deal. Like I'm, I'm really excited about all of this. Now, if this reading resonates with you, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It really lets me know that, first of all, you guys like this, and it also lets the YouTube algorithm know that you guys like this channel and like this content. So thank you so much for doing so. If you're interested in any of the cards that I'm using, they will all be listed in the description box below. Now, before we begin this reading, let us clear the energy space, raising our own energy vibration and releasing any negativity. This cleanse and meditation will be accompanied by a loud sound. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. Releasing all negativity from the body like storm clouds. Letting yourself feel calm, centered, and at peace as we enter into this safe and loving space. So let's see the energy we need to be mindful of as Pluto retrograde re-enters into Capricorn. Angels and spirit guides show me clearly. This is the three of wands. Okay, we need to be mindful of the doors that open. And I know that sounds like a very odd thing to say, but Pluto retrograde began on... Okay, so Pluto retrograde began in Aquarius on May 1st, 2023. And it moves into Capricorn on the 11th of June, okay, and into the 10th of October, 2023. But it stays, like, it will come back and forth and be like yo-yoing, back and forth up until November 24th. So we're going to see a lot of doors open, a lot of doors close, a lot of doors open, a lot of doors close during this time. And what Spirit is really showing me is that we're going to think that a lot of our success is based on other people or what other people think, or if they're going to be able to help us or connect with us or something like that. And that's just not going to be the case. It's going to be us literally opening up the door and saying, okay, I'm walking through here. Like I'm doing this. Be mindful about this. I see that we always like to have like three things on the burner, but I'm just seeing like the stove, right? And everything turned up to high because obviously we're all going to cook like I cook. And it's like, if I could turn everything up to high, it obviously will cook faster, which is not the case at all. Don't do that. And that's the energy here. It's like simmer it down, <laughs> turn it, dial it down, and then let things simmer, let things cook. And, you know, don't rush it. But I do see us tending to put it all on high to think, oh, okay, it'll, it'll cook faster. It's like, no, it'll just burn faster. It'll get burnt and then it'll be uncooked in other places. So just be aware of this. So let's see what spirit has to say. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Here we have earth. Connecting with the earth is going to be so important. If you can have a garden, have a garden. Like that will be one of the best things that you can do. If you don't have a garden, but if you can get like a, a windowsill garden, you know, that would be beautiful. Or just, you know, a few plants here and there. Being connected to the earth, going outside and going for walks, being outside. That's going to be some of the best things that you can do for yourself. Okay. Earth, earth energy, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. We can find that we're very attracted to these energies during this time, like that sense of being grounded. If we have earth sign energy in our chart, that part of our personality is going to come out very powerfully, or if we're born on the cusp with Taurus. 
So knowing that, that grounding, that stability, that security, that's going to be important. We're going to find that, you know, we might be a bird. You know, Gemini, we're always a bird, a butterfly, something that flitzes, something that, you know, goes from place to place, gathers, sees, you know, connects. But we need that tree. We need that, that haven to come back to. And that's going to be very important for us. We're going to find out exactly how important that is. Let's see what spirit has to say here. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading. And show me clearly, angels and spirit guides, angels. Okay, that's interesting. We're carrying a lot. And that's going to be something that comes up during this time a lot for us. It's like, okay, be aware of what you're carrying, Gemini. Be aware of the burdens that you're putting on you because your body's going to let you know. It just, it just is. Back pain, you know, lung pain, you know, hip pain, those type of things. It's like you're carrying too much. Your body is going to let you know. Let's talk about this time, astrologically speaking, okay? So what I'm going to read to you right now is from the from a, a senior astrologer in astrology.com, on astrology.com, and it's Narayana. I, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, and I'm just butchering her last name, so I think I'm going to give up on saying that one. I'm going to have her linked in the description box below or in the description box below. But she says, we will continue to see big names, politicians, billionaires, media personalities fall from grace as Pluto continues to expose the hypocrisy. While we are already seeing this trend, it will exacerbate when Pluto forms a squared with the lunar node of destiny between June and September of this year, 2023. It will be a mind blowing. It will be mind blowing to see how this is related to the decomposing of our old structures and paving the way for new ones to be built once Pluto finally stays in Aquarius for for good, which will be which will not happen until November 2024. So what we're going to see here is we're going to see old structures falling down. Remember Pluto in Capricorn. Pluto is all about death, rebirth, destruction. Capricorn, all about rules, you know, order, things being just so, just right type of thing. What it's doing is it's taking the rules that no longer work and saying, why am I following this? And Gemini, we ourselves, we have a tendency to do that. We're like, well, why? And if somebody says, well, it's tradition, which is actually a very Capricorn answer to have, we'll be like, well, isn't it time to make new traditions? You know, <laughs> it's going to be that sort of energy. Like, well, isn't it time, you know, to, to try something new, like to see it a different way. And we can love traditions. Like I love traditions. I love history type of thing. But, you know, if it's easier to do it this way or it's, you know, better for us to do it this way, why the heck not? And that's going to be the energy that comes forward during this time. With the Ten of Wands, we're carrying too much. We're burdening ourselves. And I actually kind of see it as we're protecting ourselves. It's like, oh, if I'm, I'm so busy, I can't get hurt. Or if I'm so burdened, I, I'm so overwhelmed. You know, nobody else can bother me right now. Be aware of this. Be aware that we're collecting things to do. We're collecting, you know, things that must be done, ways that must be, you know, this way or that way. And it's just too much. And we have to be aware of that. With the, with the Ten of Wands, we can find, Gemini, that all the beauty of life is kind of fading away. And all we see is the mud on our shoes. And that's the thing that I always get with the, with the Ten of Wands, that all we see is the mud on our shoes. And that's not how we live. It's just not who we are. So during this time, we're going to be looking at the things that burden us. We're going to be looking at the weight that we carry and how absolutely overwhelming it is. And we're going to be saying enough is enough. It might be physically like the weight that we're physically carrying, right? And that's not to be rude to anybody, but I do see this happening more and more where it's like, I'm not doing this anymore, or I'm not having this anymore. Or I'm changing this about me. Like I've always wanted to, and now I'm doing it. Something that has burdened us, we're releasing. Okay. And we're changing it. We are also going to find the things that we do that burden us, that don't actually make our life easier, but that were the coping mechanisms that we've picked up along the way, you know, just simply through living. We're like I'm not doing this anymore. I'm releasing and I'm finding me. And that's going to be so important during this time because we're going to find that we weighed ourselves down enough. It's just like enough is enough is enough. 
and I'm done with it. This is going to be a time. Oh, it gets heavy. It gets heavy, Gemini. It does. It gets heavy and it gets real. It's like, okay, you know, I know what's weighing me down, what's holding me back, and I don't want it anymore. And it gets me emotional because it's like, I don't want it anymore. I'm done. And once we make that decision, my golly, Miss Molly, I mean, like, it's like things change super, super fast. With the with the eight of wands, it's like everything starts happening so quickly. Change after change after change after change. And sometimes, Gem and I, I was going to say Gem, but like sometimes Gem and I, we are just looking at it and we're like, huh, oh, that's interesting. It's like, that's interesting that that's changing or, oh, that's interesting that that's going in that direction. And then we start to see how that change impacts us, like how we're moving forward for us, where we need to be, what we desire, what we're looking for, you know, that type of deal. So just be aware of it. Be aware during this time that once it's like, once we release, once we say like, you know, this is a bunch of bull, like I'm not being weighed down by this anymore. All of a sudden, <laughs> fast changes. We're going to see this a lot around money. Okay. Money, prosperity, success, bounty. This is earth sign energy, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Okay. The Queen of Pentacles. When we have the Queen of Pentacles reversed, we cannot be seeing ourselves as rich. So this can be a time where we really address, you know, negative relationship, a negative relationship that we have with money. So be aware of this. But this can also be a time where we start to see, I'm just seeing like, I'm seeing old structures fall down, like an old way of doing things falling down. Like you're trying to follow in somebody else's footsteps. And it's like, no, dude, you have to walk your own footsteps. Like you have to put those footsteps into the sand and let them be yours. And that's going to be a really important thing. It really is. There is a sense here also of a release of dreams. Like it's almost like I'm allowing myself to dream big. I'm allowing myself to move forward. But first, I had to cut it all off. Like I had to cut myself off from my dreams, from what I want. It's almost like I saw myself as a failure first. And that's going to come forward. Gemini for us. It's like I saw myself as a failure first. This doesn't resonate with me. What's going on here? What's wrong? Our prosperity is going to be very... I don't mean for this to sound vain. I know this even said here, like with like physically we could be releasing, you know, weight that's holding us back here. But this is like dress for yourself. It's not just for success. It's like just for you. You matter. And it's like we're taking back the fact that we matter. We're taking back the fact that we need to take care of ourselves. Something was out of alignment. Something, it was like a tuning fork. Like, you know, when you hit a tuning fork and it like harmonizes things, it was almost like, I guess not like a tuning fork, but oh yeah, like kind of like seeing like you have a bo broken bone. It could be like that. It's like it, there was something with the vibration that pained us. And it was like being in this waking world, walking forward taking care of things, it was just like too much. So just be aware of this. We could also find that like money can be going very quickly and it's to take care of, of everything, you know, kind of like I need to take care of this. I need to take care of that. But it's like taking care of people, taking care of situations, but it's like, it's, it's more emotional. It's more emotionally investment, emotional investment. So be aware of this with the queen of pentacles. There can be an earth sign energy, a Taurus, a Virgo, a Capricorn. They were having a bit of, of discord with, like sometimes we just don't resonate with that person at all. Be aware of that, especially if it's us, because <laughs> we can have, you know, earth sign energy in our chart or, you know, even, you know, Pluto retrograde re-enters into Capricorn and we could just not be resonating with this energy. And it's like, what the heck is going on here? And it's like, oh, okay. I'm trying to fit myself in a box. I'm trying to look at all the ways that I think I should be. And I'm forgetting to look at me. And it brings us to the page of wands, fire sign, energy, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. We're a student of our work. It's funny because there's a sense of like, well, how am I going to be making the money? Like financially, there are going to be some questions that come up or some things start to get really real. And it's like, okay, money's going out faster than it's coming in. And we can find out, Gemini, that we can be pretty darn thrifty. Like we can be pretty darn, you know, frugal about things and, and, and clever when it comes to money. And it's something that we never thought about ourselves before. And I know it would be better if we didn't have to do this, right? It would be better if all the money just kept on coming in and we didn't have to worry about it ever. That would be nice. <laughs> but that's not how the real world works 
a lot of the time. A lot of times, you know, even when we're heading in the right direction for us, there can be hiccups along the way that we just have to slow down and, and assess because we don't want to put ourselves in a bad situation. We just don't want that. But this is seeing ourselves as somebody who is rich because for some reason or other, Gemini, we've been seeing ourselves as somebody who is poor, somebody who is downtrodden, somebody who's just keeping their head above water. And that's, that's not how a Gemini is supposed to be. You know, we're supposed to be a little bit free, a little bit quirky, a little bit whimsical, you know, and a whole lot curious. And we're needing to claim back that energy because it's almost like the real world, quote unquote, real world stole our joy. And now we're taking it back. Don't be too logical. Be practical, be sensible, yes. But don't let Capricorn energy squish you because it can, it can. You need to be whimsical. You need to have the curiosity. You need to have the fantasy. You need to have the dreams. Those are all going to be very important. Artistic endeavors, like ways to let your soul sing, that's just going to be super important for you. So remember that. With the Page of Wands, you're going to be getting a lot of messages from spirit. Actually, I kind of, I, I just keep on seeing the mailbox like full, full, full. It might be too many. So just be aware of this. Like spirit is talking to you all the stinking time. And it's super cool, but it can also be overwhelming. We're going to see a lot of secrets around our worth, around our prosperity, secrets, lies, hurtful things. We're transforming. We're also being a student of our work, our career, of you know, what we love, what we're passionate about, whether work is, you know, that the thing that pays the bills and our passion is something else, or our work is our passion. We're going to find that we are so connected and we are so in tuned. And it can be scary. It can be scary to say, I'm going to listen. I'm going to connect. I'm going to move forward. We have to remember to slow things down. You know, usually the rabbit I see as moving very fast and then freezing, like getting scared. I see this as a time where we can move so fast that we could be doing so much that we just burn out. That it's just completely overwhelming. So be aware of that. Be mindful of that. We can also be having a fire sign energy. Again, in Aries, a Leo, a Sagittarius. It could be a child. It could be a younger energy. And for one reason or another, they change our world. I don't know how they change our world, but during this time, they will change our world. And that's going to be a big thing. It is. The tower here is everything is changing. When it comes to our finances, when it comes to our career, we are going to find that everything is changing and it happens quickly. It just happens quickly. This is a tower time. And I know people sit there and say, oh no, not another tower time. Like I, I don't want this. A tower time isn't bad. A tower time is profound change that we don't come back from, right? And I don't mean that in a ominous way. I mean that in a way that it changes us. Kind of like when we look back and it's like, wow, I'm definitely not the same person I was when I was 15 type of thing. And it's all the living that we've done, all the things that we have experienced. I've started to see the tower. It's very interesting during this reading, these readings, I'm starting to see the tower like Rapunzel's tower. You could be locked away, right? You're perfectly safe. You're just kept from really experiencing anything. And then we get knocked out of our tower and we enter into a world that's so much more than we ever imagined it could be. And it overwhelms us. It takes us by surprise, it breaks our heart. It's exciting and enchanting and beautiful and it's horrifying and heartbreaking and overwhelming. And we need to be mindful because I just see here like the emotions overwhelming us, everything becoming overwhelming. And we need to be aware of that and that we can lock ourselves away very easily and be like, you know what, too much. <laughs> Thank you very much, but I'm done. So here, move slowly because I do see us getting overwhelmed. I do, Gemini. As a fellow Gemini, I, 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 definitely, I definitely see this. Like it can become just a little bit too intense. Being aware of that, knowing that we're getting our, fo our footing around money, around our career, around the way that we're moving forward, but also knowing that we have a tendency to say, I can do that, I can do that, I can do that. And then every good intention, every beautiful thing is overburdened, like completely overshadowed by the fact that now we feel completely overwhelmed. We're also going to see a very big change in our career. We're going to see things moving forward in a way that we hadn't expected, we didn't anticipate. 
And it's going to be cool, but it can also be like a little bit overwhelming. So just be aware of that. A lot of messages from spirit, a lot of messages. Be aware, be ready for it because they're coming. You know, keep a little notebook by you because you'll have your angels talking to you. You'll have connections with people. You'll say things and somebody will be like, I was just thinking that. And that's going to happen a lot. So just know, just know that you're super connected during this time. Our subconscious spirit message here to be mindful of is the chariot. Now this is cancer energy, but this is the fact that our emotions during this time, just as we saw in the tower, they can have a tendency to run amok, just simply take over. We can also have people in our life and it's, it's going to be interesting. It's like, we seem to be a little bit of a magnet for these people where their emotions are just like so intense. It's so overwhelming. So just be aware of this where it's like, okay, you know what? Things need to calm down because it can have a tendency to be dialed up to like a hundred during this time. Things need to be calmed down. We need to be in control of things. We need to kind of take the reins, move slowly, move carefully, move, you know, powerfully within us. But we also can be having a bit of trouble with cancer energy and the cancer time frame, which is June 21st, July 22nd. It can feel like it's just more intense than we want it to be, more emotional than we want it to be. Our subconscious spirit message is nature. You know, we have earth, we have nature here now. We need to connect with nature. We also need to connect with our nature. Instead of trying to change ourselves into somebody we're just not, we need to say, this is me. This is my nature. This is who I am. And this is what I love. And there can be a beauty in that. There is, not can be, there is a beauty in that. Kind of slowing it down and connecting with you. It brings us to our subconscious tarot message, which is cancer, which is funny. We have that to be mindful of. And then we have subconsciously, that's what's leading us. So what's leading us, Mamana the God of the sea, right? He takes the water and he carves it into horses. He carves it into you know, something that can move him forward, but he can control. And a symbol of power and ferocity and intensity, you know, a horse is a magnificent creature. And we're going to find here that we need to be mindful that our emotions can absolutely get the best of us, that we can flip flop, you know, like Gemini's can, one twin, the other twin, you know, day, night, day, night type of thing. What is what we want people to see, what we don't want people to see. And then we can get mad or we've lost our temper or we acted in a way that was reckless. Our ability to move forward in, in beautiful emotion is going to be one of our strengths. We need to be mindful that it can absolutely take over. So cancer timeframe for us, you know, again, that's June 21st, to July 22nd. It can be really emotional for us and it can be brilliant. You know, it can be so liberating, so freeing, so, so powerful but it can also get taken out of hand. So just be aware of this. All right, Gemini, I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I am sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all and stay safe. Let's end this reading with a meditation, a moving away from negative energy, a releasing of negative energy, and embracing of our positive energy as we embrace the power, intensity, and beauty of this time and of ourselves. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. May you move forward in peace and in harmony, Gemini. May blessings and prosperity always be with you. I love you all. Enjoy this time. Powerful, powerful change is coming. God bless. Bye.